Experts will tell us that new case counts alone are not an accurate gauge of whether things are going well in our fight against COVID-19. There are many other factors that need to be taken into account when deciding the level of risk we are facing. Yet, most laymen are not capable of synthesizing so much information at one go. Earlier this month, I asked if MOH could publish a risk index in its daily virus update that can give the public a more holistic view of the risk that we face. This index could weigh various factors, including the vaccination rate, hospitalization rate, positivity rate of testing, contact tracing efficiency, new infections per 100,000 people, and the infection risk of other countries, among others. This will require some calculations and intelligence assumptions by experts to produce a single daily number that the public can easily digest. It should be a leading indicator, not a lagging one. However, the index can serve as a guide to both policymakers and the public to understand the current risk levels and adapt accordingly. An objective, science-based COVID-19 risk index will help assure the public that SMMs imposed by the government are appropriate for the given risk levels. This would secure more buy-in from the public and result in greater voluntary compliance with SMMs. Voluntary compliance is key in our battle against the virus, as demonstrated by the KTV cluster outbreak, which was most likely caused by a willful disregard of social distancing regulations. No amount of rules and fines will stop people from engaging in risky activities behind closed doors if they aren't convinced of the risks. I find vaccine hesitancy among a small minority of the population rather worrying. Based on the reasons they articulate, it appears that a lot of their understanding about vaccinations is fueled by confusing information they receive from friends through private messaging platforms. I myself receive a daily stream of such messages from friends and residents. The situation is more complicated than just scientific arguments for or against vaccinations. I've heard accusations of vaccine manufacturers colluding with governments to promote the vaccines, that vaccines have not been fully approved and therefore are merely experimental, or that Singapore is biased against or towards vaccines from some countries. These have been circulating since the end of last year and have steadily increased in virulence and virality in the last few months. Instead of politicians fronting the public education campaign for vaccinations, more can be done to amplify the voice of independent medical experts to explain the facts and allay the public's fears. Other experts in business, international relations and culture also have a role to play in addressing misinformation about vaccines. This must be done soon, before the window of opportunity to change minds closes. Once the news about large COVID clusters fades from the headlines, the impetus to get vaccinated will also decrease.